Hello, Tarot Tube. And I'm back with the hashtag Top Tarot Trumps. Yeah, got that right. Um, and I'm going to do five of five, the hair font. So I've watched several other videos, including uh, Musings by Masha, who started this tag, and I'm so grateful. And everybody's talking about these in such an intelligent um, and insightful way. I'm feeling a little humbled to, to, to weigh in on this, but here we go. I'll do my best. So I picked five that I felt um, kind of address some different energies about the Hierophant. Um, and I wanted to start out actually with a not a uh, tarot card. This card is an archetype card. And I thought it was really interesting because so many people, I'll put it down, so many people have talked about uh, how difficult the Hierophant is for them because of their feelings about a papal figure um, and how, you know, historically so many people have been hurt uh, by the actions of popes or the established Roman Catholic hierarchy. Um, and I just think it's interesting that this this uh, archetype card from Neil Brand Brana? Uh, Van Talk, close, is from this deck. Um, really sort of captures, I think, <laughs> what a lot of people think about when they think about this card, and he's called it the hypocrite. Um, yes. However, um, as other people have pointed out, you know, not all religious leaders are hypocrites. Not not, not all religious <laughs> leaders uh, say and do things that are hurtful. Um, and so to, to sort of counterpoint with that, although this is not one of my favorites, this is from the uh, the Little Buddha Tarot. This, this one looks like really friendly. So if you've got like these negative uh, connotations or associations or even personal experiences, that make you want to turn off to the Christian idea of a Pope, uh, I suggest that, you know, looking at it as a leader in a different a cultural or religious institution might make it a little easier to look at. Um, and this one even, you know, has the somewhat humorous, it's, you know, one of the acolytes is a monkey. So, yeah, but that's not one of my favorite hierophants. So we put that to the side. All right, of course, this was, well, I shouldn't say of course, but this really is one of my favorite Hierophants. And sure enough, when Masha pulled this up as her favorite, I was like, yep, well, that was definitely going to be in mine. Um, you know, I'm sure that bad things happen with some yoga teachers, but still, this one, I feel like it's something a lot of us can relate to in the tarot community. Many of us have tarot practices, maybe us, maybe... Yeah, many of us consider um, our yoga teachers to be spiritual guides. And so I think that this image is an approachable way to look at that. Um, okay, let's put these to the side so we can just concentrate on one image at a time. Well, here we go. All right, and this one I find, I, I talked about this a little bit last year. This is the, let me find the book. It's obviously an Alice in Wonderland tarot. Oh, here it is. And this is called Tarot in Wonderland. And I like it better than the Dame Marcy. Uh, here we go. If this is it. It's Barbara Moore. <laughs> now I'm too close. Uh, but I just get a big kick out of this one because, you know, she's looking for guidance from the Cheshire Cat. The Cheshire Cat is kind of a, a questionable character you know like they come in they go out they say things they go away they come back it's like you can't totally rely on the Cheshire cat but you know she's in a situation where she's looking for guidance she needs guidance from somebody who understands what's going on and she turns to this character so I liked this um it is kind of humorous it makes me smile um but it also sort of touches on that you know, who are you going to for guidance and what can you believe? And it's like this character has to take on a certain amount of 
discrimination, of evaluation, and, you know, really considering what they're going to take and not take. So I like that. The next choice I had to show is this one. Now, this is Radley Valentine's Guardian Angel deck. And I have to admit, I, I you know, going in with this deck, I don't think you would have said, oh, you know what, in one or two years, you're going to still be using this deck and thinking it's one of your favorites. So, But there it is. This is definitely one of my favorites. Now, he's renamed it. He calls it the Wise Counselor. And it is a female character. And the keywords he uses are belonging, learning, and traditions. And I was particularly struck by the idea of belonging, you know, in that traditional, you, we've got the acolytes. We're going to pull these two back. But, you know, these people, I mean, yes, it is about the focus. It is about the hierophant. But the story in the card is also about these two, the acolytes. And so even though they don't appear in this card, this belonging keyword, I think, addresses that. Um, and I also like the way this figure is really looking at you. So you as the reader or your client could look at this card and really feel like you are engaged in, in, a, in a conversation, you know, that, um, you know, it's a traditional kind of learning. You're going to them and looking for guidance, but there's also, you know, you can make eye contact with this one. And I sort of like the idea of a wise counselor better than some of the other ways of looking at it. All right, now here's for a really modern one. And here's another idea of, all right, this has got all the trappings of an established traditional um, religion in the, uh, what's that phrase? The Abrahamic, Abrahamic uh, traditions. Um, so very Western civilization. Uh, this, I think, is more of an Eastern Orthodox kind of, I'm, I'm not sure. I could be wrong about that. Educate us all in the comments below if you know more about this. Um, but this one is from The Unfolding Path. And I like this one as a way of sort of challenging you to not think about the Hierophant as just this Pope on a throne with the, you know, the little pointy hat and everything. But, you know, here's that sort of Christ symbol, you know, that hand, that peace kind of look and the traditional um, rod, scepter, I'm not sure what language to use. And also the robe. The robe with the um, with the waist, uh, the waist, the belt with the keys on it. It all looks very established tradition. And then for our last one, and we are going to read from the guidebook on this one because, you know, Annabelle Webb details. And uh, if you're on my channel, then you know that this is one of my favorite decks of all time. And this is another one where it allows me, at least, to get away from my personal history. Whoa! <laughs> There's the top of the box. My personal history with the Catholic Church. I was raised uh, Catholic and, you know, was in schools for a very long time. So I am going to read you, this will be our final thought on the Hierophant. So I'm going to read you from this. I'll leave you trained on the card while I read it because it's another way of looking at it. And this is from the smaller book. I've got the big old fat one that's like this thick, but I'm reading you from the little white book. The Hierophant. The Hierophant is about confronting what you have inherited and evaluating that inheritance with individual responsibility. This is the spirit of sovereignty over your sole purpose. Lead with your values. Divinity speaks directly to you and works through you, through the tr though the truth may be difficult to hear. Here's some uh, pronunciation issues. Be kind with me. Be generous. The Hierophant is embodied by Maitreya, the, bod the Bodhavisha of loving kindness and light, prophesied to be the future Buddha. Maitreya greets you at the gates of Tushita, a celestial paradise. Also, when the Hierophant appears, Ganesha's blessings are coming your way. Ganesha, so here's Ganesha. Um, Ganesha 
is the remover of obstacles, a diva of intellectualism, the arts, and science. So I think that uh, Benabel Wen's description, it's primarily uh, from a Buddha, uh, an Asian sort of tradition, but it does touch on some of the things I've talked about here, like, you know, your responsibility and you applying your own intellect and being true to your values. And I think this is a lovely, a lovely image to close on. And I, well, the master of the Yarkains. So there you have it. Um, I am searching out the tag and looking for everybody else's. Please hit the like button on your way out if you enjoyed it so you can um, find more of these. That will help them come up on your feed. You know, not just mine, but everybody who's working on this tag. That will help the algorithm. And it's, it's great fun, and I encourage you to join in. And if you want to, leave a comment below, and I'll look for yours. Thanks for stopping by. Have a great one, and get out there and find somebody worth listening to. Bye-bye.